So in this video, I'll be answering questions from you, the community. One of the biggest debates when it comes to Marriott credit cards is if the Chase Wiz Carlton card is better or if the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant credit card is better. And so we'll go into that discussion. We'll also cover what to do if you didn't start your credit card journey with Chase, but now you want to get Chase credit cards and how to structure that credit card roadmap, as well as a Hilton redemption to the Maldives and the options you can take to get the best value for your own situation. With all that being said, there's definitely a lot to cover. So let's just jump right in. My buddy Nikozi says he's wondering if Marriott Titanium is worth going for. He also wonders if Marriott Hotel credit cards is uh, the best value proposition, the brilliant or the Ritz. He may have guests this weekend, so he may not be able to watch, uh, which is fine. Uh, we'll watch the replay, which I appreciate. So the question is between Titanium and then if the brilliant card is better than the Ritz card. And so let's talk all that together. So the first thing is the Titanium Elite status, which I am a part of. I've only actually used it once, but the two benefits on this task that has been most effective for me is number one, the 75% more points when you stay, which is nice, uh, as well as uh, the premier status, the United Premier Elite status you get um, for United when you actually have to Elite status too. So you get premier silver status with United. That has been the two most helpful things for me when it comes to titanium elite status. I haven't been really lucky with upgrades. Um, you know, it hasn't really given me any more than just platinum. So I think if I were to look back, those are the two things that are the most prominent to me. And so if you look at the cards further with Marriott and uh, the Brilliant and the Rich Carlton card, um, this is kind of what I come up with. And I have Robert J here from the last question popping in saying, thanks, Dan. Thank you so much, Robert, for the $5 super chat. Really appreciate it. Hope I answered your question and you have a good plan going on now with your new Chase card. So I appreciate the question and the super chat. So back to the merit cards this is between the Brilliant and the Rich Carlton card. Uh, for me, I would say the Rich Carlton card has a better value proposition if you look at each of these cards individually. And the reason why I say that is because Really, when you look at status, the platinum status is okay. I would say that if I would get, get the brilliant card, I would get the brilliant plus the business to get that elite night credit situation to help me get to titanium elite. That's going to be very, very helpful. But because the Rich Calder card has this very powerful party pass with a Sapphire Lounge, gets you the same 85K free night award, it's $200 cheaper as an annual fee, still gets a $300 credit that's annual and not monthly. I mean, I would go with the Rich Calder card. Um, I think that that would be, in my opinion, the more the bigger value proposition, even though the Brilliant card does come with that Platinum Elite status. And we have another super chat from Mr. Joe Barretto. Joe Barretto says, I can't wait to meet you in person. Me too, Joe. It's going to be a great time in New Orleans uh, next weekend. And so I'm looking forward to seeing you and the rest of the community and to talk about our favorite topic, which is, again, going to be credit cards. And we'll do a nice big WEPA right there in, in uh, Jackson Square. It's going to be uh, pretty amazing. So again, Rich Carlton card, uh, best thing for Marriott, in my opinion, best value. Uh, I would say Titanium Elite is pretty good, except, you know, for me, it's really been just that United Premier Silver status. So I want to hear from YouTube. This is the last poll of the series here. But I want to know from you guys what you think is the better credit card, the Brilliant card or the Ritz card? Because that's been a big topic of discussion for a long time. And obviously, there are a lot of different opinions on that. Oops, excuse me. So this is the third question. Which one do you think is the better Bonvoy card? Again, you can join at menti.com and use the code to log in. And we're going to go ahead and get this, the polling started now. So we're going to see which is the better card. Do you think it's the Bonvoy Brilliant? Do you think it's the Ritz Carlton? Uh, you know, if you're a Marriott loyalist, you probably have a very strong opinion on this. Um, but I think based on what I said, I had a certain opinion on which one I thought was better. And it looks like I'm not alone. It looks like the Brilliant is a little less popular than the Ritz-Carlton card, although it is making a comeback now. But certainly significantly more people think the Ritz-Carlton is the better Marriott Bonvoy credit card, at least taken head to head. Now, if you take the brilliant and the business together, I would change my answer because now you have a pathway to titanium elite in a very easy 39th scenario. But that's that's going to be a different conversation. It's really just a head to head comparison of the Ritz Carlton versus the Bonvoy Brilliant card. And it looks like about 75% of you say it's Ritz Carlton, about 25% of you say it's Bonvoy Brilliant card. And so 
I think it's pretty unanimous that most people think that the Ritz Carlton card is going to be the better value when it comes to the Merit Bonvo system. The next question is from Robert. So Robert, we're finally getting to your question here. He's in the late game, has no chase cards except the Amazon Prime. He comes under 524 in November for the first time since 2019, which is, by the way, a long time to be under to over chase 524, which is about five years. But, you know, you did make it worth it by um, built out Amex, Capital One, U.S. Bank and City setups. He doesn't want business cards, which is totally fine. He wants his opinion. Should he add a Sapphire card later this year and maybe get a Freedom Flex just after or stick with what I've got? And, you know, I'm kind of in the same situation as you. Um, I'm not like always over 524, but it's always on top of my mind. And because I didn't start with Chase, I have to come back to Chase and see what I can get. And so for me, what I would recommend is I would, you know, figure out what Chase cards you want to get. Because if you if you want Chase business cards, and I know you say you didn't want to, um, that was what you want to do first because they don't add your Chase 524 status. But if you want to add personal cards, I would just target them in a way where you're maximizing the welcome offer when they come up. So make a list of cards of Chase that you want to get. Sapphire Prefer is probably one of them, but I'm sure there are other ones too. And just wait till there's a welcome offer that you want to get and then get it. Um, I don't think based on the other setups you have that you're in any rush to get any other credit cards to fulfill a core credit card setup need. But I would just target the cards as the elevator offers come up into play. And that actually may help because it may help space out some cards as well. So if you want to stay under 524, that may be helpful too. Um, but that's how I would play your strategy. I, I don't know if I get the preferred right away just because it's got that lower 6K offer right now, but maybe in the future it'll go up again. You never know. It happens every year so far though, for the past two years, so may be helpful. So Manny C asks, planning a trip to the Maldives in three years. And so we're all, you know, Maldives is a great place to go, but it's one of those really high, high redemption things. I want to use a Hilton points to book six days one with the FNA. And the reason why he's doing that is because you get that fifth night free. So if you want a six day stay, five nights with the fifth night free with points and then one with the FNA. Do I have enough time to start with the no annual fee card or should I start with the surpass? Any other tips to achieve this goal? And so what he's describing is going up the Hilton ladder to get the welcome offers, to get enough points to get a six night stay at the Maldives. Okay. So uh, from the start of things, obviously getting the Aspire card is going to be part of this because you want to get not only the welcome offer for the points, but also the FNA about a year before you go. So you have time to redeem that exact point. So the first thing I think would be reasonable is to figure out how many points would it take to go to the Maldives for six days. And so I did that. And so let's go over that here. So I chose this property in some random date in July of 2025. And it was a Hilton Maldives, M and Geary, so I don't know, butchered that name, Resort and Spa. That was the one that was the most reasonable and affordable that I could find in the Maldives. And so what you're looking at is two different rooms, one bedroom beach pool villa and a one bedroom overwater pool villa. And what you will first notice is that they're about the same price in cash. Actually, the better room, the one bedroom overwater pool villa is cheaper than the actual one bedroom beach pool villa. And so if you had a one free night certificate to use for one of these rooms and you just pay this with cash for five days, that'd be approximately $5,000 for the whole stay. Very expensive. Uh, you'll also notice that when you look at the points per room, one point, one of them is actually somewhat reasonable at 110,000 per night, which is the one bedroom beach pool villa. Whereas the one bedroom overwater pool villa is 381,000 points per night, which is insane. So if you were to use the points redemption for the overall approval, that's about 1.5 million Hilton points for that five night stay, uh, including that fifth night free, where it's going to be about 440,000 for the fifth night free when you look at that one bedroom pool villa uh, on the other side there. So one gets you a 1.325 cent per point redemption, which for Hilton, I would say is pretty good. One gets you a 0.375 cent per point redemption, which is not so good. And so the thing, though, is that if you do have the Hilton Aspire card, you do have the chance to upgrade your room to from that lower room to a higher room if you have the Hilton Diamond status. So there's that possibility, but it's not confirmed. Yuri pops in and says 100K is a standard rate, 381K is a premium rate, and I, it's absolutely true. Uh, point of the story, though, is that one is significantly more pricey with points than the other. And so now that we kind of understand that and we're thinking of maybe doing the more reasonable redemption, which is the 
one bedroom beach pool villa, we can then create a plan to say, well, we need approximately 450,000 Hilton points, you know, for the actual booking plus a free certificate because you get that fifth night free. Um, you also need to complete this in three years. And then, you know, based on kind of what you look at, there's also that cash versus buying points scenario. So you'll see that actually buying points at a discount could also actually make this a lot more reasonable when it comes for paying it for cash. And so we'll go into that in a one moment. So the way you can get to 450,000 Hilton points is basically uh, looking at welcome offers. I just pulled this off the Hilton website or the American Express website like yesterday. And so these are kind of the standard points you get. You get about 80,000 for the regular honors. You get 130 for the surpass. You get 150 for the aspire and 130 for the business as a standard offer. Obviously, it's going to be elevated welcome offers here and there, but that's kind of what you're looking at from the standard. So we'll use those as our metric on how to get 450,000 points. So if we go back to the offers and you look at these things here, if you spend at the 3x level to make the welcome offers based on the minimum spend requirement, for example, $2,000 on the Hilton Honors Card, that's 3x times 2,000, 6,000 points. So those are the total values you're going to get. Um, I'm sorry, I think I got that math wrong there on the, the top part. But basically what you're going to look at is the total of all of these points together. And just to make this math better, I'm sorry about this, but just pretend the Hilton Honors Welcome offers is like 95K or something like that. That's where I get the 100K from, 101K from. So if you just get the honor, surpass, and aspire card together, you'll get 408,000 points total, which is not going to be high enough to get to that 450,000 points. However, if you use the surpass, aspire, and business cards, you do get to the point where you get above the 440,000 point threshold to get all the points needed for that particular booking. So uh, I personally think that if you're looking to get this type of redemption, starting with the surpass may be better, understanding that there may be family language in the future, but it would be okay to kind of just not deal with that at this point because you want to get the amount of points you want by three years. Now, if you have time to get all four of them, that would be great too. I think you certainly have time to do that, but you're going to need to get you know these cards, at least the surpass aspire and maybe even the business to really get to that 450,000 point to get the points you need for those Hilton bookings. So that is what I would say for that. One other thing I want to mention, though, is that Hilton does offer this 100% bonus on Hilton Honors points. And so if you look at this slide here, you can see that when you buy points at a certain time, you can actually get a 100% bonus. So you're buying the Hilton points for 0.5 cents per point, which is a pretty good deal. And so uh, if you do that, this would cost you $2,400 for 480,000 points. Again, putting you over that threshold for the points that we're looking for. So again, we're looking at these two rooms here. If you were to get this, uh, the first one, which is the one bedroom beach pool villa, if you were to get that hotel room, you would actually get that cash rate to be about $5,000. But by using points that you bought at 100% sale, you actually could decrease that amount by about $2,500 or about 50%. So that's really good. It's a way to think about redeeming for points with Hilton, using the fifth night free benefit to get you a better value using the sale on points to make that booking. So if you were to time it so that you had 100% booking right before you went and you were okay with spending that cash on the room instead, that would be another way to do it as opposed to just spending on a welcome offer. Now, doing it with points or buying points is not free by any mean, but it is getting you a significant discount if you were to buy points versus buying the room with cash. And so that is the three methods, I think. To answer the question, I do think you should start with a surpass card to get, get started because uh, you're going to need at least those three cards. But if you want to have three years, you have three years, I think you can still do it with Hilton Honors card, no problem. But what I want to do is throw it kind of to you guys. How would you pursue the redemption to the Maldives? Would you do welcome offers? Would you buy cash or would you basically buy points? What exactly would you do? And so I want to hear from you guys. So this is going to be the uh, slide for that. So go ahead and if you haven't joined yet, uh, go to menti.com and use code uh, up there on the screen. I'll also put it down here on the bottom so people can see. And so it looks like uh, a lot of people are starting to vote now. And so I'm going to go ahead and also put in my two cents on how I would do this too. And so it looks like we have a lot of people that don't like cash, which is reasonable because the reason why we're here is to get discounts or deals on what we're doing. Understanding that buying points actually on 100% sale 
uh, is still technically cash, but you were getting it at a significant discount compared to if you were to buy it straight up from cash. Um, we also have the welcome offer. So it looks like about, you know, eight people were voted. So I would just say it looks like a lot of people do prefer to buy points on a 100% sale. And that exactly would be uh, what I would look for too, because I think it's a really cool thing to do, uh, especially knowing that if you're going to Maldives, you will be spending a lot of money anyways. Uh, but if you have three years to get there, certainly just doing it by welcome offers is a great way to go too. But sometimes it's hard to plan out for those things. There's going to be point evaluations, prices will change, things will change. Um, looks like there's a lot more people that are looking for welcome offers, getting that deal just based off of their organic spend. Um, that's exactly what they like too. Uh, but what I'll take away from this slide is that no one wants to use cash, which I think is good because cash is definitely the worst way to do this. Unless you wanted to confirm the overwater pool villa. Like if you want to confirm that and make sure you had that for sure, then I think you could consider doing that. It's still kind of a lot to, to really reserve that. And maybe it's better to just use the diamond status to hopefully get that upgrade. But again, uh, I'm really happy that about 15 people voted. Uh, looks like it's more people who are buying points on sale and less for welcome offers. Nobody with cash.